Right, okay, so we are here with Out of Hours Hyperlocal again for the fourth week. Um, what I'm first going to try and do is see if I can uh, share the YouTube link so people can watch us. Um, go to my channel. Let's get this little out of the way first. Yeah, we are now streaming on YouTube as well, apparently. So, um, just to reiterate, as far as we got earlier, that it's not quite yet. Um, uh, let's just see what's going to get um, here. Start again. Right. Right, oh, here we go. Right, I think I've managed to grab it. Okay, let's just post this in Twitter now first. Um, This is going to be the most exciting part of the recording, obviously. So. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so we're on the way. Right. Um, we've not got a, a very full room today. We do have capacity for 10, but two will suit me quite happily. So, um, I'm Jerome, so I'm the person that uh, hosts U Hyperlocal every week. Um, and we, we talk to a different theme uh, every time. And uh, to date, Jamie hasn't been able to... Uh, join us but um, Jamie maybe you could introduce yourself Hi Jerome uh, I'm Jamie Summerfield um, I do a, a hyperlocal site uh, for a town called Stone in Staffordshire uh, which is called A Little Bit of Stone uh, and I've been doing that site for like two and a half years now Okay and, uh, and more recently you've uh, got a kind of more professional Interested in hyperlocal as well, I believe. Can you talk about that? That's right. Um, I oh blimey! Um, about a <laughs> month ago, uh, I started a role at uh, at Staffordshire University, um, working on a hyperlocal project um, that started there. They got um, a a new site uh, at staffslive.co.uk, uh, which is a, a public. Sort of quite professional news site done by the students um, and I'm working on a project to basically hyper localize that um, to take that directly into, into communities and work with communities and active citizens um, to set up local versions of that website uh, so it's a really exciting project okay maybe we can uh, talk a bit more about that later if there is anything you're you're able to talk about I mean um, we'll probably bang heads on that at some point um, because obviously I'm working on a um, university research project with various people and part of that is hyperlocal as well so maybe that'll be something that comes up later actually that reminds me next week um, we have um, Andy Williams from Cardiff University who is who are one of the partners on the Creative Citizens Project, and we will be talking about uh, content analysis of hyperlocal stories that was done last year, and um, and that we're now starting to share the results of. Um, I was one of the people that was doing that content analysis with Andy, and actually we, we use Google Hangouts as part of the method for that. But I'm sure we'll talk about that next week. But um, for the moment, could you talk us through what your what what you wanted to bring up this week? Because uh, I think you were saying you'd had some issues in your hyperlocal, Jamie. That's right. Um, I the the topic that I I put up for tonight was um, the the issue of moderation, um, moderating or pre-moderating comments on your hyperlocal site itself, uh, but also the issue of um, Facebook moderation. Um, and almost terms of use or you know rules yeah. for people to comment um, because I, I was in the unenviable position uh, last week where for the first time I'd had um, sort of threats of legal action um, because of uh, some of the comments that had been put onto the site uh, so it's sort of 
occupied my mind really and really made me think about how I should be doing this because as I say I've been doing the site for two and a half years and it's not really been an issue for the last two years five months really uh, I've never really had to moderate that much uh, yeah. it's all been quite pleasant uh, but I think a couple of things happened um, one was the, the site suddenly the last the last 12 months particularly the last six months just rocketed uh, mm. number, number of people who were actually uh, visiting just went crazy the last six the last what, six why months. do you think that is where's that coming from do you think um i think it's been it's been going up and up and up for the last sort of 18 months really okay. um and i think what happened the last six months was there was a, a number of sort of big issues locally that the site was really covering uh, which just seemed to drive a, a, a load more traffic to the site which is brilliant it's, it, you know, have, it's fantastic. Have you, been, have you been covering the Staffordshire Hospital stuff recently? You, you know what that that's one of the things that e even though Stafford Hospital is for a lot of people in Stone would be would be their hospital. We're sort of right, right on the cusp, and um, most people in Stone tend to go to in, to Stoke on Trent. Oh right, okay. to their hospital. Yeah, my my knowledge of the geography is pretty hazy. And for anybody internationally watching this, um, the easiest thing might be to stick. Uh, what would be the easiest thing to stick in Google Maps? Um, Stone, comma Staffordshire, or something like that. Staffordshire, but it's yeah. It's essentially the West Midlands. It's north west of Birmingham, just above Wolverhampton. So that's a, just to clarify. And uh, sorry to kind of cut in with so much. Interestingly, there is a there are a lot of hyperlocals in Birmingham, but there's also a, a kind of an unusually healthy cluster around the area. So you've got Connect Cannock, um, Pits and Pots is another one, isn't it? Um, Litchfield. Um, yeah, Litchfield Live. Yeah. So uh, there's so, Nant sorry, Nantwich yeah. News, my Tunstall uh, in yeah. Stoke. So just to, give a bit of con just to give a bit of context, really. So yeah, so um, so yeah, so you've so your popularity has kind of rocketed, um, and so there's more activity. So there's kind of more potentially dodgy activity, I suppose, as well, is there? Dodgy grounds. Yeah, I mean, the, it, just to explain the, mm. the issue which which caused all the problems. Um, there's a, a, a park in Stone uh, called Westbridge Park, um, which has got um, you know football pitches. It's got a canoe house. River Trent mm -hmm. sort of goes through it. Uh, it's got a, a leisure centre, which has seen better days. A, a children's play area, right in the heart of the town. Um, and the local council, the borough council, uh, want to redevelop it. Uh, they want to provide a brand new leisure centre. They want to uh, brand new children's play facilities. L lots of different things. Um, but the way they want to pay for this is to sell off a bit of the park to a supermarket. Right. Massively controversial. Um, yeah. There was a, pub a public meeting in oh, early November in stone where you saw some of the anger some of the the emotions involved in this um and obviously a big issue like that as a hyper local site you, you want to cover it you want to mm. um report on the issues um but unfortunately um maybe not unfortunately actually but the site became the the, the, the focus for an almighty debate Mm. Which is great, you know. You, yeah, I want the site to be a platform mm. for that kind of thing, uh, but unfortunately, I, I did sort of lose control of it. Really, there was that many comments. Mm. I think from November up until you know a couple of weeks ago, there must have been six hundred comments mm. um, on on this one issue, spread over about six or seven posts. So there's there's a couple there's a couple of things I'd like to pick up there. Um, when we talk about that activity, is that on the blog or on Facebook or on Twitter or a mixture of? All? It's a, it's a mixture, yeah. Um, the, the site bizarrely, for most of the site's history, there's there's been you know healthy comments on, on the site, 
but no issue has really attracted this many comments on the site itself. Mm. Most of the the debate and the comments tend to happen on Facebook. Um, yes. You've got sort of two thousand plus Facebook likes, and that mm. that's where you get most of the conversation. Yeah. Now that that's quite expected in my experience because I, li I yeah. not only do I know James and Steph from WB11, but I live in Wensfield, so that's why yeah. I use the site. And um, again, ninety I would have thought about ninety nine percent of the comments and act and kind of users engaging back in is through Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. That that's certainly the case with my site. Um, un until um, this, this Westbridge Park row, where mm. suddenly it was happening on the site itself. Mm, uh, interesting. And we're talking. I mean, one of the posts, the one that really kicked it off, and I, I must put put it in the in the chat bit uh, in a second. Yeah. Uh, just so people can have a look. Um, at, you know, over two hundred comments from about yeah. probably about forty or fifty people, um, yeah. and unfortunately, it just it. I think because passions were ru were running so high, uh, it did just descend into a, a slanging match, really. And, and I'm assuming these were um, people on both sides of the argument, and that's why it was carrying on into so many comments. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. when, when people are agreeing, they tend to kind of say, okay, I've said my piece, and then everybody else agrees, and then so it, w it wouldn't run on as long as that. Yeah, that says, well, it, it, it was because it was. it, it is, you know, it's such a polarising mm. issue in the town. Um yeah, that you know that that's what obviously fueled fueled the debate. And and is this something you're um, covering? I'm just making some notes here because uh, I've got things arising as I as you're talking about it. Is it something you're covering in multiple stories? One of these ongoing issues where a new thing comes out and you do a new blog post. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's been going on since since last summer, um, but it, it really started to roll. When there was a, a public meeting was organised mm. um, in the town, um, and I've been oh, there's probably been a good, blimey, maybe a dozen, fifteen mm. stories since last uh, last summer on it. Um, what I what I decided what I decided to do uh, because there was lots of different views, and I I, I thought it was very important mm. that the site remained. Totally neutral. Yeah. Uh, on the issue, the the site has never had an opinion, or a view, or an expressed a view on it. Um, but what I did do, I did a series of of, of guest posts right. uh, called Westbridge Park Viewpoints, and people from various sides of the argument uh, were invited to submit a guest post, outlining why they were either for the development, against the development, whatever their take on it was. And that, and that could be anybody from, whether it's an audience, a stakeholder, um, do you know yeah. what I mean? It could be a, the person in the street, or it could be the CEO of that supermarket, or it could be the CEO of the council, or... Yeah, yeah, it was any, it, it, it was open to anyone, and I got, I got one from uh, the Westbridge Park plays host to the Stone Food and Drink Festival every autumn. Um, yeah. And the chairman of the Spoon Drink Festival had very strong views on it, so mm. he had one. There was a, a campaign group set up on Facebook, um, which was all very for the development, um, so they had one. There was a, another campaign group that had been set up, which organised a petition, which got about 5,000 signatures, which was Keep Westbridge Park Green. Uh, so, they had one. So, sorry, um, not to... Um, uh, uh, kind of not to go, kind of go over this again, but actually we're just being joined with some by somebody, so maybe this would help to cover some of it again. It, it was a park that was an existing park, so a piece of green public land with kind of playgrounds on and playing fields on. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, there's a, there's there's space, there's green space, there's a there's a, a children's play area, there's a, a leisure centre, um, there's a one a, a one other end of it is a, is a river. That goes yeah. through, and there's a, a canoe club that have got a canoe building. So there's and, a, num a number of uses, really. And 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 it and the plan was to develop it and expand it for the good of the community. But the way, the only way they could do that and fund that was by selling off some of it 
to this um, supermarket as part yeah. of their development plan. That's right, yeah, and that, that would fund uh, a new leisure centre, new children's play areas, uh, other bits and pieces, just to mm. redevelop Westbridge Park, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Right, okay. Um, so, so you, and you say you've covered it in about 12... Um, about twelve ongoing stories, and then you and in, and then additionally you had the um, the guest post that you were offering people as well. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and were people kind of writing those themselves, and did they need editing as well? Or um, to be honest, I I, w I received them by uh, by um, email, oh. and. I didn't want to um, actually ed edit them at all. Um, I thought it was important that they went up um, mm. as as I received them because it yeah. was a, a contentious issue. There, there was nothing uh, libelous in in any of them. It was just you know d different sides of this argument. Mm. Um, but I found that it, it was these posts um, that really then kick-started the debate, the comments on the site itself. Yeah. Um, and, 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 so, and, and obviously those guest posts people could just as easily um, uh, uh, to, they could just, people could just as easily comment and those were getting fed through to the Facebook page as well, were they? And I guess yeah, they, yeah. The, they, the, they, kind of, they, they auto post, do they, through to Facebook? Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't do the auto, uh, okay. on, but, I, but I did share the links uh, to them on, on Facebook, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to shut the door, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, my wife's just come in from a meeting and slid this across the table, aren't we? Cake, so. Oh. <laughs> Done to, well, actually, it's very small, in fact, but... <laughs> Look quite big when you held it. So. Sorry. Oh no, it's okay. I'm just uh, I'm just got some cake envy now. There you go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, yeah, one of, the, one of the questions I noted um, before we get into, well, I suppose this is part of how you dealt with dealt with it. Um, one of the issues is. Um, did it start to change how you were writing about? Oh, hello, Ali. Ali, have you uh, have you met or come across Jamie before? And we can't hear you if you are speaking. I don't think. Okay, um, Ali, um, you'll just have to pick up where we are. We're we're talking about uh, moderating comments and uh, maybe click click on the link that's in the te in the text chat because that might give you an idea. Um, but um, yeah, as you realised kind of uh, how inflammatory things were starting to get, did it change how you, the, your tone of how you wrote stories and how you how you carried on running the story? Um, I think it, it it has done. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I haven't since since it all blew up. Um, I haven't re I haven't posted anything new on on the subject. Uh, for the last sort of week, okay. um, not not deliberately. If if something did did come up, uh, then it, it it would be on there. Mm. But I think it's made me, I don't know, nervous really about putting putting something about mm. this issue on the site, um, just because. I, yeah, so, sorry. No, I was going to say. I suppose when you're doing the guest posts, you can kind of. Almost um, hide behind this shield of saying, "Well, actually, we're just offering people open voice, and we'll post what they send us." Um, I mean, if so, would you literally have posted anything? Somebody at what point would you have said, "Actually, this"? Well, I know we said we were going to do guest posts on this, but we really can't put this up. At what point? I mean, beyond okay, there's the language issue, obviously, um, but beyond that, yeah. I think to, I mean to be honest the one the, the ones that I that I got were from um, you know so, some were submitted from you know 
particular campaign groups. Um, one, as I say, from the Chamber of the Food and Drink Festival. Um, mm. I don't think I could have just... The, the posts that were there and, and that were submitted sort of set out the arguments, really. Mm. I don't think I was... Even if I'd received any more, I don't think I would have put any more on anyway, unless there was a totally new and you know different slant on the argument. Mm. I did. I wouldn't have wanted to have just run over the same old ground. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it had probably reached its natural endpoint anyway. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Although saying that, I have got one more to put on. There's one more uh, that I got yesterday. Um, uh, and, which, and will you be? Will you be doing uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that that is it's it's different. It's from it's from a different developer um, who's looking to who wants to at the supermarket, which mm. is at the, the root of the argument, not to be on Westbridge Park, but to be on a bit of land that he wants to develop half a mile away. Um, yeah, it, it sort of moves things on, I suppose. It gives it a, a different um, a different slant to the argument. Uh, so that you know that one will be going on, yeah. Mm. Well, it's fascinating because most most people are um, gagging for people to to read or hit like or anything like that on their content on their hyperlocal. Well, I don't know about gagging too, but um, but to let alone get a whole raft of people writing guest content is sort of. I mean, it's either you've approached it very. Well, and and some somehow in your appeal, you've you kind of done that very well, or it's such a contentious issue that people have picked up on it. What was your process for kind of pitching out for these guest blogs? Was it how were you doing that? Um, to be honest, um, the first one uh, was 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 sent to me with, without me even asking. You know, okay. someone at the chair of the food and drink festival sent something. Um, as a, you know, you might want to use this. Uh, this is, you know, these are my thoughts on West on Westbridge Park, and it was just, you know, it was a really well put together, really good piece. Um, it was then that after putting the first one on, that I then mailed, you know, the the, the two campaign groups from polar opposites that you know you might want to submit something. Mm. Um, so it was literally me approaching them and saying you know this is an argument which you know but that that first po that first post helps it's the equivalent of um the busker who uh yeah. sits down and puts 20p in his in his guitar case to to start the thing the ball rolling exactly. it? that's it yeah yeah and it's all i mean you were asking earlier about would i as it changed my view on how i cover the story or and this thing is going to run and run because there's a there's a consultation that's ongoing at the minute that the borough council have run. There's mm. a, a number of sort of public exhibition events starting next week. Um, it's all tied into the local plan that yeah. the borough council have just sort of ratified, which will go before a, uh, an inspector in public in the summer. Mm. So this thing's got months and months and months in it yet. <laughs> so, right. so it's only just started, really. So I, I suppose we I suppose we should get into uh, the crux of, of of the issue really. So moderating comments, what have you been doing, and where have you been kind of seeking advice or thoughts or kind of uh, trying to get a sense of what you should or what you feel you should be doing in terms of moderation? Um, I'm probably going to sound really naive here, but I, I on, up until this 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 point, I never really considered how I would handle something like this. Mm. I never thought when I set the site up, um, I never, although I, I was a journalist for 10 years, um, but I never thought how I would handle something like this. I never thought it would get to something like this. Yeah, you, you, um, I suppose you kind of hope you hope you get that much uh, traffic and then when it happens and it's over something contentious, you, you start to realise, actually, maybe this, this isn't so great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's really interesting because, like you say, you want you, you know you want an audience, you want people to visit your site, you want um, you want comments, you want interaction and engagement. Um, it's just when there's something which is so controversial, 
it does become difficult because what what I found happened was that I had no I didn't want to pre-moderate so any comments um, you know for the whole two and a half years that the site's been going you know comments have, have just pinged automatically onto the site mm. and then I, I get the email alert and I'll have a yeah. read of it that, that's fine nothing nothing wrong with that that, that can stay on mm. but I found that when I was getting at one point there was about 60 comments in one day right and I was you know it was literally when I'm, I'm you know I do the site on top of a full-time job my mobile phone just didn't stop pinging with mm. these updates mm. and comments well, all this, day this is what I was gonna say so you you work full-time and you're trying to kind of uh, deal with all these um, uh, deal with all of these uh, comments that are coming through. So what are you doing? You're just trying to get on get on with what you do normally and keeping it in the back of your mind that when you get home you have to have a good go through it. Or to be honest, I was uh, I was as I said earlier, I'm at Stafford University now, but I was in my previous role when this all sort of kicked off really. But um, it was it was very hard to let it let it go when you you know when the comments are coming when you're getting the email alerts and you're having a look at the comments and you can see that it's descending into it's getting a bit personal it's getting it's turning into a slanging match mm. you know it, it's very hard to think well I'll, I'll I'll deal with that in six hours when I get home or whatever mm. so I found that it was it sort of took a, <laughs> it took over for a good few days um, mm. And I, I was moderating. I really did feel like I'd lost control of it. Really, I was moderating, it almost like I was just in the middle, trying to keep the peace. Almost, yeah. Um, yeah. Trying to, if if I thought a comment had got too, um, had got too personal or was going way off, then I would respond to them directly. And I was sort of chipping in and commenting mm. as much as anyone else, really. Um, it was th but then we discovered that um, there was a lot of people who were commenting from sort of multiple aliases. Oh, so there was a lot of this stuff going on as well, um, and it did. It, to be honest, it got hijacked. Mm. It got hijacked by quite a small number of people, but who were, you know, using aliases to to launch attacks on other people who were. were and, there. And and have you pointed that out or exposed that in the story itself? Are people aware? Um, yeah, yeah. What what I did um, when I saw that it, it was a problem, um, I actually posted a comment, um, basically saying that this had been that we were aware that this was going on, that mm. it, it, we wouldn't we wouldn't allow it. That anyone who did post under multiple aliases would be in danger of of, of being barred from the site. Um, so things it was it, it was from that point where things got I don't know I just felt like I had to get a bit tougher with it really yeah, yeah. you know and it was at that point where I wished that <coughs> I had some kind of framework some kind of house rules something to fall back on mm. uh, but I felt like I was a little bit sort of floundering with no baselines or no guidelines yeah. uh, that I could flag up to people or I could enact, um, and that's some, that's actually something that I'm I'm now doing. Uh, I've looked at WV11 and various other yeah. sites to look at, at their sort of comment guidelines. And, and ha uh, have WV11 got comment guidelines then? I mean, what I was thinking of is the Hyperlocal Alliance because we had. Um, some Perry a couple of weeks ago was um, talking about that, or three weeks ago was talking through Hyperlocal Alliance. And uh, are you in, are you part of it, Jamie? Or um, yes, yes, I've I, I, I'd signed up to that, but I must admit I haven't. Uh, I've not been a very active member uh, for mm. a good few months. Um, that's that's something I I need to uh, I need to get back into mm. absolutely. Um. I had, um, and sorry, so there's the last part of the story before we kind of go into any other questions and, and Ali might have something to add. The last part of the story is um, this week the fact that these comments have been happening has got to go ahead because something else happened as part of it or can you talk about them? Is there anything else to it? 
No, not really. I think it, it, it just built and built and then what well, what brought it to a head for me, um, and and made me this was late last week, uh, and made me totally change my approach to, to moderating just to try and get some control back was I I I changed the the, the, the moderation system now so that no no comments go onto the site unless I've approved mm. them so I'm pre moderating. Um, because um, somebody uh, well, a couple of people um, threatened legal action, basically. Right. This is oh, sorry. That that's what I was alluding to. That. Um, uh, sorry, Jerome. Yeah. That's it, right. No. It was that which sort of occupied <laughs> occupied my mind really, and even though the posts that they were they were talking about um, were not, were not libelous, that there was nothing mm. why I, you know I should have taken them down. Um, it certainly occupies the mind to be uh, mm -hmm. to be threatened with and, all and 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 the activity was starting to become personalised towards people rather than personalised around the issue. I mean, that, aimed at that's, the issue. that's right. Yeah, it, it just got you know, it, 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 slanging match is the only way that you can describe it. Really, you know, mm. it, it, it just got silly, and there was mm. personal attacks, and as I say, people using aliases to to further that and. And it was just going nowhere. So, you know, it, it, the threat of legal action sort of forced my hand, I think, and made me think about pre-moderating. But, you know, it was, I think, I felt like it was the only way to go, really, to just, for me, to gain some sanity and some, and some control of it, really. Mm. Um, Ali, have you got any kind of either questions or experiences you can share? I don't even know if you've got a mic yet, have you? Or maybe you can type questions into the uh, text chat. Or... We, we can't hear you, Ali. Can't hear you. Can you hear him? I can't hear. No, sorry, no, Ali. I can't hear you. I think there's something there, but it's really, really quiet. So maybe, maybe if you type... <laughs> it's nice to have another face on board anyway, so <laughs> make, us look, make us look busier. No, don't hide! <laughs> um, I, I suppose um, another thing I had noted was, um, in, I suppose a couple of things. In terms of when you cover stories, and this is something that we might talk about next week in the content analysis, um, were you, are you, do you make yourself conscious of covering both sides of a story in this situation? So that maybe the first story was about the whole issue and what was going on. So did you, do you look for, do you look for sources from both sides and, and do you actively go out and get them or how do you typically cover a story like this? Um, I, I, I think my instinct um, as, a, as a former journalist is, all, is always to do a rounded story, yeah. uh, is always to get you know, to get the various sides of it. Um, um, sorry, I'm just looking at a, a comment mm. from Ali that's just yeah, been... Yeah. I'll, I'll look at that in a second, yeah, Ali. Yeah. Thanks, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah so I'm always conscious of, of covering it, you know, from both or all sides. Mm. Um, and I think if you if you look through the, the post that I've done on, on the story, uh, a little bit of stone.com slash Westbridge Park, um, I think you'll see that I've, I've covered, um, yeah, quite quite a f quite a few sides of it, really. Um, I think the the, the viewpoints, um, the idea behind that was to try and get, you know, as many different views in this argument covered as I could, really. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's been. I think it's been pretty rounded, and it's I've sort of gone out of my way really to to try and make sure that um, that all sides are covered. But then the, the trouble is, you you try and stay, or have stayed totally neutral and uh, impartial through it all. But then when you've got two very very polarised um, opinions on it, um, you know, one side. Think that you're against it, and another mm. side think that you're for it, and it is yeah. quite hard to maintain and stay totally neutral. What do I have? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm guessing in in your approach, you are neutral, but you know in the back of your head that you do have an opinion one way or another. I mean, I'm assuming you aren't entirely neutral, or aren't you? Or maybe maybe you don't want to answer that because it. Uh... Yeah, no, I I I have yeah I have my own personal opinion um, on it, but um, and yeah, you know, it's. Can you ever be truly, totally new, neutral? Mm. Uh, you know, in any any coverage of anything, really. Mm. Um, and, and 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 how and when you're getting kind of two sides of the story, are you literally picking up the phone and thinking, well, this is the person that's going to offer the 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 opposite end of the argument, and getting a quote on the phone or emailing people. No, to to be honest, it, it's it's mainly it, it's mainly through email, to be honest, and I've, mm. I've found that. Um, in a way, a, a hyperlocal story I find, or the way I approach a hyperlocal story, is very different from how I do things when I was a, a journalist or a reporter. Because mm. um, I think when you um, when you're a reporter, you you have to package everything together. So you have to get you know both sides of the argument there, cover everything. I often find that with the comments, with the interaction. You know, a, a story is only really just beginning when you post it up on the site, and it's the comments, it's the interaction that then fill it out, that then mm -hmm. take it in a totally different direction, or you know, add that context, that opinion. Mm. Um, okay, we've got um. So yeah, we've got Ali's questions here. So I'll read out for anybody who's uh, on. Um, I think, I, uh, can you hear me now? I think. Oh I might... yes, Ali. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, yes. I can hear you, Ali. There was Go some weird it. setting, so um, I've tweaked it. Uh, yes. Yeah. So my question was really, um, you know, legally legally speaking, you don't, of course, have to. You know, you can, it's easier to defend yourself against libel if you didn't know that there was something offensive on your website. <laughs> so, you know, post moderation is kind of the way to go, probably, to protect yourself. But. You know, my question for people who can't see the chat is, you know, can you avoid getting notified of every single comment by installing some system which only flags up the potentially rude ones or offensive ones? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we went with Discuss, Discuss just recently, which because it's got a flagging thing. So I only get an irritating email if somebody flags something for moderation yeah. there. And yeah. hopefully that might lessen the stress on you as moderator, because that, you could. That's that, interesting. That sound, yeah, that sounds great. So, um, we, we, I actually installed um, dis, dis, discuss. Um, is it, have we got a link for that? Is it D I S Q U S? Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll, I'll um, find it and link it up. Don't thanks, worry. Jerome. Um, I, yeah, I installed that, but I, I was having um, is, issues with that. Um, that. It, it was. It seemed to be conflicting with the WordPress discussion um, uh. bit, um, and it, it it had all all manner of problems. Um, so I actually en ended up going back to the back to the WordPress. Uh, mm. So maybe from from what you said, I, I wasn't aware of the the, the flagging system um, with Discuss Alley. So I think that's something I need to yeah. I need to have a look at and maybe go back to just. I'm discuss. pretty sure I'm pretty sure there's other WordPress plugins you could use. Um, if, yeah. You know, I installed it on a fairly new install. If you know what I mean. So without yeah. getting too techy, it might yeah. have been a bit easier. But but, yeah. but the issue is that, like you were saying, and like most people probably experience with Facebook pages, that 99 percent of it is on Facebook. Mm. So I'm I I mean. I suppose on Facebook you can flag. Yeah. What can you flag stuff up for? I can't remember now. Yeah, but you, you can re report a spam, can't you? I think. Yeah. You can ban people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you ever had to ban anyone from Facebook? Well, actually, um, with Greener Leaf, we get very little Facebook chat because we don't really invest in Facebook, and you know we probably should do more, but <laughs> but. Uh, you, you know, historically we've just sort of auto posted into it and left it there, but it, increasingly we get more now. Um, I mean, with the day job, with the day job we've had to ban people sometimes um, from Facebook, but uh, very, very, very rarely. To be yeah. honest, yeah. we go there, and usually, usually we ban people just for spam or porn more than libelous oh, right. things, because because you know quite often we take the view that 
uh, unless it's something really, really appalling that um, if somebody says something libelous on Facebook, it's not necessarily our problem. If you know what I mean, it's yeah. Facebook's problem. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it, do, it does, so, it changes the dynamics totally, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this, this came up the other day, didn't it, Ali, when we were talking about moderation, because James from WV11 said one thing about who's responsible for comments on Facebook, and you had a conflicting view, I think, did you? But we don't know if we ever got down to the bottom of it. I don't know, I can't, I can't remember. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm sure there was some kind of who's responsible of our... Uh, the people that comment responsible, or is the person that holds the page that is commented on responsible? Um, I mean, James maybe will kind of let us kind of pitch in at one point then later. Yeah. Watch is this? Um, he he did actually watch the entire uh, recorded on air uh, post the other day. I was quite impressed. Oh, good for him. Um, <laughs> but it works quite well as a podcast. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Facebook. Facebook radio. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, um, I mean, I, my, you know, that, I think that's why it gets more stressful that when you have potentially runaway comments on your own site, because you're the publisher. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Uh, do you? Uh, I, I, does it ever get to the point um, of where you're kind of thinking, "Oh my God, this is actually just trolling. This is people just people out there just trying to make people's lives in misery." Or does that is that less of an issue in hyper local? Or? Well. I think I think it's less of an issue. It obviously depends on what you're writing about. <laughs> mm. um, I think you know the view I've always taken with with Green Leaf is is that um, in a way it's 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 our site and we get to decide mm. who who posts on it. And if somebody's irritating, then we just you know if, if you get to a point where there's a thread where it's not constructive for whatever reason, then usually I first switch it to pre-moderation. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, obviously that, that can really take the heat out of things. And I don't really feel any moral obligation to publish comments if they're not constructive. Mm. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I think some people feel quite guilty about yeah, you know, yeah. uh, some notion of free speech or, or censorship or something like that. But uh, I'm, I, you know, maybe I like to think of myself as a benign dictator or something. But if, if that... <laughs> But I don't. I don't have any. I don't. You know, if somebody wants to let off steam and be rude about somebody or irritating or unconstructive, they can do it on their own site. You know, it's free mm. to set up a WordPress blog, and I've said that to people before. You know, if you want to have a rant, go and have a rant somewhere else. Yeah, start a yeah. Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't see any need for it to be on on my site, if you like. No. And, uh, no. Uh, or, that's or do it on Facebook. Where I am and, now, I think, Kelly. I think that's that's the position where I am now, where. Uh, we, we, we've had the negative stuff, and we've and I, I I've got much more of, of that attitude that you've just spe spelt out there. Um, that I, the, the, I I really don't want to stand for it. There's no room mm. for it, um, mm. and it, it, ca it came out the blue when it happened when this this issue exploded and it, it, it all tumbled on. Um, whereas now, but I, I don't quite. I, but, but saying that, I don't like being in the situation. Where now, on a little bit of stone, I'm, you know, I'm pre-moderating. Mm. I, I don't really want to be in that. Yeah, it's good. It's good to avoid position. it. If you can. Yeah. And 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 do people um do people kind of get um well both of you I suppose but Jamie I guess initially do people get who you are when they're reading your blogs or when they're reading your Facebook page do they do they appreciate that um you're not doing it through any um, massive financial gain or reason, you're not doing it through any specific political agenda, you're not t t tied or attached to the council or something like that, um, you may be doing it for a whole raft of other um, reasons and um, uh, do you see what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, I, d I do and I, I, it's very difficult to answer that. I think the, the majority of people, I mean in, in, in Facebook, the the majority of people who who do comment and who who, who are engaged and involved mm. um, know f know full well that you know this is something I do on top of on top of uh, my job and mm. why I do it. Uh, but I think as things grow, you know, now there's let's say there's over two thousand people on on mm. Facebook. Maybe everyone isn't isn't aware and and doesn't uh, and doesn't know. It's, it's di yeah. difficult to answer, really. Hi, Pauline. 
Hello, can you hear us? Oh, we can't hear you, but that's fine. No. As long as, as long as you can hear our wonderful voices, that's good. <laughs> oh, no, we can hear you. You're in. Have you have you joined us before, Pauline? I can't. No, I, can't. I kept forgetting about it. I actually just saw a tweet there from someone else saying it was on. So. Okay. Ooh, well, welcome. Nice. Welcome. <laughs> um, I I I do recognise you from Twitter. I think you have a hyperlocal in Ireland somewhere. Yeah. Um. Uh, Dreamnet is good. Right. And I met you at the talk about local. Um, the last event. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so have you have you been watching on YouTube or anything? Because we're streaming to YouTube as well at the moment. No. <laughs> so you're you're live on YouTube. So <laughs> right. you're you're welcome to bow out immediately, right? But um, no, we're um we've been talking, uh, moderating comments and um, all the issues around kind of as a hyperlocal. At what point do you step in and start deleting comments or moderating and? And and all of that really. Um, I mean, if you if you you can go back. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, I I can't hear you, Jerome. Sorry. Not sure. Who yeah, you're back again. Uh, Andrew Perry's muting me. Which is nice. <laughs> Hello, uh, right, I'm going to have to, uh... Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me again? Hi... Can you hear me now, Jerome? Yes, I can. So, um, I'm I'm not sure who Andrew is. I'm not sure if I've come across him before, but um, uh, he was just in the room. He may have been muting us because it was causing um, feedback loops or something. So he may have been trying to stop that happening by muting us, but then it mutes us. So you have to. So I kept mute, unmuting myself, and mute, but I've just had to. Moderate the hangout by booting him out of the hangout. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> it's a case I, I, study. Sorry, it's a case study, live case study. I Absolutely, thought, I thought you said, yeah, a live thought, example. How do we handle this now? I thought you said it's a police state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're repressing people's freedom of speech. To, to be to be fair, last week Dave Hart did that to me. He was muting everybody um, because he was hearing echoes, and in the real in the end, I realised he'd muted me. And so, if you look on the top right where you've got your uh, microphone uh, icon, if it goes red, that means somebody's muted you, and you just need to click it. But I was unmuting myself quite a lot, so uh, so yeah. Anyway, so right. Um, okay, is that you? Ali, can, you can still hear me now, yeah? A little bit. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, is it just your volume? Jamie, can you hear me? I can hear you fine, Jerome. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. fine. Um, so Pauline left. I wonder why Pauline left. Maybe she was a bit. Um, she hadn't realised we were recording, which is fair enough. So, um, uh, da -da -da -da, what was I going to say? So yeah, that's the first time I've had to uh, moderate a Google Hangouts. But uh, uh, um, it's interesting because um, you've given me Jamie an idea for a future um, uh, a future theme for um, uh, for one of these, which would be looking at the differences. Well, people like yourselves, possibly to an extent, who are who um, um, journalism professionally and then are doing a hyper local because you were saying your approach is slightly different is, is possibly slightly different and the whole kind of our bloggers are hyper local journalists and people throw their arms up and say no we're not um, but that's probably that might be of some interest in the future um, 
Okay. See you, Jamie. Um, see you, Ali. <laughs> okay. And then there were two again. That's all right. Um, so, awesome. yeah. And, and Pauline's just kind of... Uh... Oh, yes. Oh, and uh, Mark's, Mark's of, from Like More Life is obviously watching YouTube because and he's telling Pauline that she can come back. Um, uh, so I'm just going to tell Pauline, yes. Yes, please come back. Mark to see if she wants to come back. So, um, yeah, I wonder where we. I wonder if there's anything else in this that we haven't uh, kind of knocked about, really. Um, it's, uh, it, was, it was interesting talking to talking to Ali. Uh, mm. I think I'm going to, you know, reinvestigate, uh, discuss, uh, mm. and if, see if I can get that working properly because the way that Ali. Um, Oh, Pauline's back. You know, uh, Hi, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Get that working properly. The way that Ali. Yeah. Uh, Pauline, are you by any chance watching the YouTube stream as well? Yeah. Will I take that off? Yeah, because it just because it's um we can hear Sorry. it coming back through. Yeah. It's all right. That's fine. That's good. Pauline, are you by any chance watching the YouTube stream as well? Yeah. Yeah, so, is that better? Yeah, no, that's good. I, I'll tell you what may have happened earlier. Andrew, who was in the chat, may have heard that and been muting people to try and knock that out, but I hadn't even heard it earlier. So. Uh, um, uh, sorry, Jamie, what were you saying? Um, about looking at disgust. And, and also, I'm, I'd, I'd be interested to... Because with something like Facebook, you're kind of limited by the constraints of Facebook itself if you want to give the community options of kind of self-moderating. Um, but I wonder whether there's a way of people saying, okay, I'm going to update our, you know, our, our policy, you know, the, the policy text that you have on the Facebook page to say, look, if people have issue with it, direct message us or, um, mm. uh, or whether this, I mean, it's probably, it's probably less likely that it's something people can do in, um, in the post, the, the comments themselves, like you know, use a code or something. I mean, um, I remember um, a forum that I used to go on years ago called um, Yahoo Ray. Um, so, Okay, and Andrew came back in again, and is then there. See, this is the dangers of uh, posting the the link to the hangout on on uh, on Twitter that people have somebody's followed it and picked it up. And, um, but yeah, yeah, who I used to have a system. And I know there's lots of kind of forum systems like this where, um, it was like a point system. You get a, a, you you can be given a plus one or a minus one. I mean, it's it's just like Reddit actually. It's the same same kind of system, yeah. and you can only post or comment if you had like a positive amount of points or something like that, or 100 points or something like that. Mm. But I mean, you just can't do that on Facebook. Um, you're kind of no. constrained by, by how it works, regardless of the fact that's where most of your commenting and a lot of the issues might come about. Absolutely, yeah. Do you mind if I just ask, um, if I just ask Paul, Paulie? Yeah, yeah. Um, Paulie, how, how do you moderate comments or have you got a system in place? Um, oh, Andrew's back. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, I'm on Facebook. Can, can you hear me? Uh, I, I can't. I can. can. Can you hear me? Right. I think. I think. Yeah. 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 Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, on, on your site, really. I'm just in, in wondering if you've got any any sort of code of conduct or how no, you're commenting. That. On my Facebook page, I have nothing, um, no conduct, of, no code of conduct, nothing like this. And um, I just keep an eye on. It. I've only had two issues where I've had to take down, you know, what someone has said. But in general, it's been positive. 
Yeah, it has for me actually. Ninety ninety nine percent of of the two and a half years that I've been doing my site, sort of on yeah. the site itself and on Facebook, I've never had a problem until very recently, oh. um, where there was a big controversial issue and things just went a little bit mad, um, with hundreds of comments, and it got quite quite personal and um, a, a bit of a slanging match uh, on NC. Muted <laughs> by Andrew Perry. It's all right. It's, I unfortunately I can't block him permanently. I don't think so. <sighs> I think. Hello, um, so we're, we're back, uh, the second half, a little bit at the end um, for Out of Hours Hyperlocal, because um, amusingly we're discussing, um, we are today discussing uh, moderating comments, and I foolishly put the link on Twitter, and somebody had joined the um, the hangout and um, started muting everybody and I had to block them several times and so this is the first time I've ever had to moderate a Google hangout on air um, but um, that's a lesson learned don't post it live um, so Andrew Perry a very naughty boy please don't come back <laughs> I assume you were doing it maliciously because it was just I would you assume that Jamie it felt like that didn't it um, I, I think it was definitely that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was uh, okay. so, irony, of the highest order. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was just saying there may there may well be something you can do in um, uh, uh, something you can do in Facebook somehow, but you're kind of limited by the constraints of uh, kind of the system. I mean, the, the other yeah. thing that you, um, that you get often on Twitter is when a hashtag innocuously starts out and then starts trending and you get um, every kind of most of the tweets on that hashtag are then porn. And in, I've, I've noticed even that, that like things are unconferences when you think, well, there's not really that much activity and then there's suddenly quite a lot of activity around a hashtag because there's a lot of tweeters there. And... Um, you start getting all kinds of rubbish on it. It, yeah. it does, yeah. It attracts all manner of things, doesn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Um, I, 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 I think that I'm in, I'm in the situation now where, where because of what's happened the last couple of weeks, I'm now uh, pre-moderating comments, which I'm not. I'm not really happy with. I'd much rather yeah. post-moderate and have some kind of system in place where the community itself. Um, can aid the moderation. I think the flagging system in Discuss sounded quite sounded really good, and yeah. I, I find that on on Facebook, a lot of the time there is a lot of a lot of sort of self moderation that that does go on. If someone does sort of step a little bit too far and um, you know just gets yeah. a bit personal, or, then other people in a in a community digital community like that can quite quickly step in and you know and intervene and sort of moderate for you as well um, mm. so I think there's something I think there's a lot to be said from what Ali, Ali Tibbet was saying earlier about about getting some kind of community moderation mm. uh, going as well it's, it's interesting my, my only experience of it um, was personally was um, Stephen James last year went on holiday for a week uh, well deserved holiday and um, they said, could I look after the Facebook page for them? And, yeah, um, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, but what was quite funny was um, kind of the day they were leaving, there was actually a story on there that was getting a bit contentious. And it probably wasn't that an, an unusual level of friction. But to me, I was like, oh, my God, they're going to run away and leave me with this thing. It's like somebody leaving you with their baby and going, there, you change all the nappies and give them something to eat. And I'm going, I don't know what they eat, which nappies, what? And um, and actually, it was cleared up before they left and, and I didn't really have much to do. 
Um, but um, but actually, there were just there were a couple of things that came up. Uh, so, for example, people on the um, posting onto the Facebook page saying um, either either through a message or a, a Facebook comment, um, you know, that goes on the on the page, but is on that little right hand panel because it's really oh yeah, sort of post by others. Yeah, um, and it was and it was just people saying, um, could you push out information about our new tanning salon or um, could you talk about some offers we're doing or I'm just starting a yoga class could you and I and I just kind of had to say I don't actually know what their policy is, is on that I'll, I'll mm. leave it because if you if you start reposting and posting things like that um, once then everybody will assume that you can do that for everybody and then suddenly you're advertising whereas mm. if you were posting those things on your WordPress site then that would definitely be seen as kind of advertorial content. Mm -hmm. um, so that's absolutely, another, yeah. That's another I've, level of it. Yeah. You, so if so, if somebody posts um, information about their business for that purpose on your Facebook page, what do you do? Does it stay? Or? Um, to be honest, I I get a lot of um, people posting stuff wanting it to be shared. Yeah. Uh, like the, some of the examples you just set out there. Um, if it's businesses, um, I, I must admit I don't I don't share them, mm. um, but I'm quite happy for for local stone businesses to you know to put their stuff on there. Like you say, it doesn't it appears in the recent post by others mm. box, so it's separate, it's contained, and you know if it's a small stone business, then I've got no problem with that whatsoever. But like mm. you say, I think if you if you share one, then you've got to share them all, and then you're in. You know, you you, you don't really want to be doing that. Um, yeah. So he, so here's an interesting one. Um, what about charities? A charity is an interesting one. Um, what about charities? Um, do do you mean Jerome that if somebody posts something on Facebook? Yeah, it says, can you, know, you share this? This is, this is a charity event. Um, do you see what I mean? Unless you'd rather yeah. not get into this. And, uh, yeah, no, no, I, 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 I do share, um, to be honest, a, a lot of, the, a lot of the, the content that I get for the site, um, the WordPress site itself, does come through, uh, through Facebook. Amazing, mm. I get so much content. Uh, so many stories um, through people, you know, putting things onto the Facebook page themselves, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they're feeding they're feeding you the stories a lot of the time. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I must get half a dozen mm. stories a week that that way. Uh, so I don't want to close that channel down uh, mm. or restrict it in any way. Um, and are, are people typically, like, I'm assuming people aren't necessarily writing those as press releases, there is still an element of labour for you to then turn that into a story, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It, it would be, um, i just trying to think of a recent example. Uh, oh, yeah, somebody, it, it is a charity one, but so, you know, someone um, running uh, a marathon this year to raise money for Birmingham Children's Hospital Mm. Um, they they put that on with their just giving uh, web address, um, and, you know, and a, and a really really lovely story about what that hospital has done for their young son. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I I shared that on Facebook, but I also mm. wrote that up as a story for the website as well. Um, mm. It's a really lovely story, and and then I can get back in the person who's put that on Facebook. I can get in touch with them and. I asked them to send a photo through of their son if they called a family yeah. shot, some more information. And then, you know, within 10, 15 minutes, you've got a really good story for your website. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. And do you, um, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to be awkward now because this is just me and throwing out scenarios. So another scenario might be uh, a massive supermarket or a massive chain or something that you wouldn't contact you with a story that you wouldn't normally cover because it's kind of maybe seen as promoting their brand but they're doing something that's tied into it's like kind of a charity event so it's got it's, so as far as they're 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 supporting it because 
because it makes because they seem to be very nice and it's a charity event and it's a bit of a sponsorship for them. But then it's a charity event, so kind of where would you have that come up? Have you come across situations like that? Um, you know what? I haven't actually. Um, there was um, where have I? Oh no, there was one. Um, there was one in the summer um, when staff at the one of the local supermarkets, I think it was the co-op, mm. were doing something during the World Cup. And they were all dressing up in, um, you know, St. George's crosses and stuff. And, and they were raising money for, um, for I can't remember who it was for now. But, um, and I, I, I did cover that because yeah. it generally did seem to be the staff who were doing it. It was the local Rather staff the corporation. who were driving it. If I'd got, you know, if that was from, mm. you know, co-op head office with a... Uh, a nice press release, then maybe I wouldn't have done it. But then I don't know. They, in a way, it's 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 part of the game. Sometimes yeah. isn't it the whole PR game where yeah. you know they do att att attach on to causes and charities and events and things. It's it's interesting because um, here we've obviously got WV11, but then um, Wolverhampton today is the local councils. Um, kind of version of doing a hyper local, and um, I've kind of followed them because they all, always seem to follow the useful citizen information and you know charity links. And so, in in my mind, it's all, always been very kind of useful, or it's been encouraging, you know, like civic engagement and all these kinds of things. And then one day, I they posted something which was about the Coca Cola truck, and um, like the big one you see in the adverts coming to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wolverhampton. I don't know if you saw it. Um, uh, yeah, it, it came to Stoke on Trent. Yeah, well, it was, the road. Yeah. It was coming to. Um, it was coming to Saints. Uh, that's right. It was coming to Waitrose, and so they were saying, "Come along and um, get some. You know, see, have your photo taken by the truck and get some free merchandise." And I kind of, I, everybody, and it, literally everybody that was posting was saying, "Yeah, this is great. Um, I'll come along. The kids will love it. We're heading over there now." And I said, hold on, is this is this kind of not massive brand promotion? Um, mm. They're not Coca Cola aren't doing this out of the goodness of their hearts for a photo opportunity. Yeah, is this not? Yeah. Um, and nobody really seemed to get it. And I actually bowed out of the commenting after a while because it was starting to get sort of quite people were starting to flame me. So I just yeah. left it. But I did email the council. I don't think I. I um I got a response that I remember. But I kind of even was looking back at the fact that. The council had a, um, they have, you know, ambassadors for healthy eating, etc. Et yeah, yeah. Um, they have policy whereby their social media shouldn't really be seen to be promoting a brand, large or otherwise. I don't. Think. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. So it was quite interesting, um, but I just left it. I didn't follow it up. I emailed them once. Yeah. Myself, but yeah. um, but it kind of just jarred with me, and I think the reason it jarred with me was because everything else I'd seen them post had been. Um, very thumbs up in my book in terms of what yeah. it was doing for the community. Yeah. Yeah, so, Jerome, I'm just going to have to duck out yeah. just for one minute. Yeah. Uh, I, I, sorry, I, sorry, I'll just be one yeah. minute. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. 
Oh. Hi Jerome. Uh Hello there. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to leave the chat. Hello, yes, yes, no, that's fine. Um no, and that I do that, apologize. Yeah. No, it's been great, and um, maybe we'll see you next week. Um, just to remind anybody else who's watching, uh, it's 9 o'clock every Thursday, 9 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, because we have had American visitors last week. We have an American speaker. And um, thank you very much, Jamie, and uh, maybe we'll see you next time. And just one last plug for anything, URLs or anything that you want to drop in. Um, well, uh, if people want to have a look at, at, at my hyperlocal site, it's a, um, a little bit of stone dot com, um, and I'm uh, working on uh, a hyperlocal project at Staff Staffordshire University. Um, you can have a look at the site as it is now before it goes hyperlocal, but it's at uh, staffslive dot co dot uk. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Jamie, and uh, good evening. Thanks for your time, and uh, we'll see, see you next time, uh, same time next week. Thank you. Bye.